Very warm well, welcome to the programme as ever on a Thursday night sporting chat for the best part of an hour. Normally the sporting chat involves two or three people. We're going to overburden one person tonight because there were supposed to be four of us. I've only got the one guest here this evening, but if you've ever listened to him, seen him on television, you'll know that he can fill good portions of time, and he does regularly on Saturdays even now. Even though he's a former manager at this point in time, a former top player as well, uh, and somebody that I've uh, enjoyed writing a book with, among other things, Brian Laws. It's good to see you again, and Brian. You. Uh -huh. And you. Thank you. And a good job you turned up. That's all I can say. Because I like we, to fill the seat. I, yeah, I yeah, can yeah. fill it. I can fill Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Spreading out. Spreading I am spreading out. out. Uh, a lot of my guests are spreading out at this uh, time of their lives. And dare I say so is the presenter. Um, first of all, apologies to uh, supporters. And there are many and they deserve many more of uh, Sheffield Ladies Football Club. Uh, we were due to have uh, Carla Ward, the captain, with us uh, in the studio. Very sadly, she's, uh, she's gone down ill today. Nothing too serious, I hope, but best wishes for a, a quick recovery, Carla, and I'll be in touch to rearrange your visit to the studio. And we'll hear about their season because they done remarkably well. First season in the uh, FA Women's Super League and in Super League 2 finished fifth in the table. Which is remarkable, isn't it? It just shows you how powerful women's football has now come on. It's, it's amazing. Does. You know, I've been following it over the last few years and and seeing the the increasing um, spectators that have been following ladies football, and yeah. it's now they're getting on te television areas now within Sky, and and it's yeah. it's become very very popular. And, uh, and you know, and some of them are fantastic players. It's brilliant to watch. Yeah. It is. I went to see a game quite recently involving Sheffield. Fantastic standard. Really, yeah. really good. And, um, there, I mean, we used to be accused of being patronising about it. There's no patronising to say that it's a very, very good standard indeed. No, it is. You have to be careful, don't you? Because people do mistake what fellas say about women's football. They really do get yeah. the wrong ideas sometimes. Absolutely. And they take it as sarcasm rather than anything else. But yeah. it isn't. It actually is. It's quite true that, they, you know, I've been very impressed. and. I mean, even uh, uh, I'd seen recently uh, uh, a few games on television, and it, it hasn't put me off. You know, I think, no. you know, it's just because it's, it's women playing. I actually quite enjoy, enjoy it. watching it. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. And I, we look forward to hearing more uh, about uh, Sheffield Ladies' achievement from, from Carl Award. James Gregg, who would normally be here to round up everything else, uh, he's uh, otherwise gainfully employed. He's found a better gig. <laughs> He'll be back next week. Is it me? Uh, do I smell? Uh, well, not only that, <laughs> it, 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 I rick my back, tore a back muscle this week, and I'm sponsored on the show this week. I'm sponsored by my daughter, actually, without whom I wouldn't be sitting here with socks and shoes on because I can't bend down to put socks and shoes on. And it, by the way, Isabel, you, you, you're going to have to take them off tonight as well when I get back <laughs> home. <laughs> and Brian, now this is a bit more seriously, uh, has a health warning for us because he's a, he's a fit and healthy chap. I've known him for, for many years. He looks in absolute prime condition. You would never have known that you recently had a, a, a very major operation. Yeah. Um, so it's the first time I've actually talked about it. Um, I've kept it quite quiet. But in, in June this year, uh, unknown to me, I wasn't expecting it, uh, ended up with a, a double heart bypass, which, um, from, a, from my point of view, from a sporting point of view, it's just total shock. Wasn't yeah. expecting anything. And, and took me by surprise, and uh, it, we only really found out by by fluke rather than anything else. Uh, in which, you know, probably because of my fitness over the years, has disguised probably the the true depth of it all. But um, thankfully, a friend of mine who's a, who, who is a doctor, um, and when I talked to him about what I thought was having, um, you know, heartburn, um, the only thing that I talked about heartburn with my Doctor was because I've never suffered with heartburn before. No. So that was my only sort of sign. It only lasted a few minutes, and yet um, he felt that there was something more sinister than that, and wanted to do all these tests. And I ended up with doing uh, ECGs, and um, and they come clear. There was mm. nothing on that. I had a scan. There was nothing on that. Bloods and everything. So I, I felt pretty good. Mm. But he still wasn't convinced, which it was a bizarre thing to say. Mm. He said, "I'm still not convinced. I, I think there's something more. What we can, we need to, you know, discuss." And he uh, yeah. he ended up saying, really, to cut a long story short, you know, you you have to have an angiogram really to find out the, the true aspect of it all. Okay. Well, 
that sets the scene. We'll come back to Brian sure. a little bit later in the programme because there is something very serious underlying this. I mean, I saw Brian late last season because you cover games for yeah. Radio Sheffield and yeah. at Nottingham, for Nottingham Forest for the radio station there. And I'd seen you then and I saw you early season at Hillsborough looking in prime form. Uh, and I was absolutely stunned to hear that in between you'd had this, this yeah. heart surgery. And we can talk later about what that, how much football management may have affected you in terms of, of, of that, yeah. but also perhaps a warning to everybody out there uh, about the signs to, to look for. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's great to see you look, looking so well. We'll talk a bit, a bit about Sheffield Wednesday, sure. uh, go, going through a bit of a, a rough patch at the, at the moment, slightly sticky patch, but just briefly Sheffield United before we go on to there. Um, Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> it's a condition. You sign yeah. the contract. <laughs> All right, if I have to talk about them, yeah. Okay, Chris Wilder. Yeah. What do you know of him? Have you come across yes, him over the lots years? Of, lots of times, Chris. Uh, I mean, Chris is a, uh, it's probably his dream job, I have to say. And I spoke to him uh, when he was at uh, Northampton doing a terrific job there. And um, I've actually met him in Sheffield at one of the dinners. So um, I was on his table, we were having a good chat. There was nothing about Sheffield United in the air, but you always, he always talked about Sheffield United mm. with passion. And uh, to get the job that he's probably always wanted mm. uh, is a dream come true for him. And it's, you know, it hadn't worked out. It hadn't, you know, he was going to ho hopefully hit the ground running. Yeah. But Sheffield, Sheffield United aren't going to allow you to do that. No. And certainly at the start of the season, he found it difficult to get his first wins on his belt. But since then, I, you know, they're really look unstoppable at the moment yeah. and uh, that's great credit to his beliefs and you know and uh, to the team and they're all they all working hard which is yeah. uh, sounds really crazy to say but they are they, they do look as though they're really up for the for the cause and yeah. they're in for a fight and they're certainly going to push what i think is probably scunthorpe yes. all the way which where they, you still live where where you I still manage live. Uh, exactly yes and uh, again another football club that is doing remarkably well however it's not surprising because uh, the finances that they now have in, in, in place at it, Scunthorpe yeah. is, is very good. The chairman is very, very thirsty for success. Peter Swan. Peter yeah. Swan, yeah. And he has, the, he has the money and he's prepared to spend it. And their wage bill is probably up there with the best. So it doesn't surprise me. They've no. got a fantastic squad of players. And the, the, they've been gelling over the last two or three years. And uh, it hasn't surprised me that they're top of the division. Okay, you saw it coming. Graham Alexander, outstanding success so far. So yeah. not put a foot right. I mean, at home, I think he's only dropped a couple of points, hasn't he? He has. I mean, he came in at the later stages yeah. of last season. And uh, again, speaking to Graham, I know Graham very well. I had him at Burnley as a player, right. uh, and he was a former uh, player of Scunthorpe as well when, in his younger days. And and Graham's a, a real student of the game. And yeah. the one thing that when I had him as a player. Um, fantastic pro probably one of my best pros I've worked with yeah. in in the way he, he conducted himself and there's no surprise that he, he played till he's 40 because mm. uh, he kept himself fit he did all the right things that you would expect mm. and from a young player looking at a, you know a senior uh, player he was fantastic he was right up there and he and again even it when he was in his late 30s he was still practicing things mm. which you know, normally they'd be jogging off the training ground as quick as they come. But, I bet uh, he never had to practice penalties. Yeah. Every single one he used to put. Didn't he have a hundred percent record? Yeah. But well, let me remarkable. tell you. Let me let me tell you. After every training session, he did. He did practice. He yeah. took a bag of balls, uh, and he just have spent half an hour. Yeah. Every training session, every time, and he just wanted to do it on his own, and he'd just be smashing it into yeah. the. No goalkeepers in, just hitting the back of the net. Right. So you do it without goalkeepers. Yeah. Well, that's the way I take a penalty. Uh, well, I, a if I'm, if I, yeah, if, well, if yeah. I want a penalty, I, want, I don't want the goalkeeper <laughs> in because he'll save it. <laughs> right. Well, we're going to we're going to talk about Chad Evans later because he's the, you you can't talk about Chesterfield versus Sheffield United without discussing Chad Evans. We'll perhaps do that in the second part of the show. But Sheffield Wednesday, um, you are an Owls fan. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. When when he got the job at Wednesday, I don't think people actually realised the background, did they? No, the family background. The family had. background is very strong. Uh, my wife is an, is well and, ha and still is a massive Sheffield Wednesday fan and. Yeah. Uh, her dad is uh, a brother, 
So all the family are. Yeah. And when we eventually taken over at, uh, at Sheffield Wednesday as a manager, it just encapsulated it all. Yeah. My son, who was born uh, while I was at Sheffield Wednesday, he is he, he's an owl. Yeah. He's, he, he loves wearing a kit. How Can't, old is he now? He's seven. Right. And he wants yeah. to, he, he follows me to the games. He wants me to go take him to the games. That's his team, Chaffee yeah. Wednesday. It's a, it, and it's, he's latched onto it. And, you know, I'm not forcing him into it. He just loves it. In fact, we're watching the England versus Scotland game tomorrow. Mm. And the one thing that he says is he wants Scotland to win. Because of Fletcher. Fletcher and Bannon. <laughs> and Bannon. Yeah. Can't believe it. <laughs> well, disloyal. I tell you what, when you were Wednesday manager, and you were for three years, now you're still the longest serving manager so yeah. for over 20 years since Trevor Francis left in 1995. We talked about that before you, yeah. we came on air, and you were almost disbelieving of that fact. Yeah. But, it, but it is still the case. Three years you were manager, up until 2009. You also managed, of course, Grimsby, Scunthorpe, Burnley, and Shamrock Rovers, yeah. uh, where you enjoyed the Guinness, but not a lot. N lot not else. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but when you were Wednesday manager and you returned home to, 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 to a wife who supported the owls and everything, the old family, oh. it, you could never get away from it. No. I mean, this is what causes the, the, the double heart <laughs> bypass surgery, Probably. surely. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the good thing is uh, she's got a good understanding about football as well, and mm. uh, she's followed me all the way through. So I think. Um, we just enjoyed it and we enjoyed it together, which yeah. was quite nice from a family's point of view. Because, you know, it's very hard when you're a manager and you're on the road, you're, you're traveling, uh, you, you know, this is a 24 hour a day yeah. job. It's seven days a week. You are constantly, constantly on the job, yeah. talking about it, ringing people, going to see people, traveling. Yeah. And you have yeah, to have a so. very, very understanding uh, wife. Because at the end of the day, as opposed to a husband beater, when you've lost again or something, absolutely it a bad spell. Well, I was I was always scared to go home when we lost. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was that's the slowest time I've ever driven. <laughs> was when we've lost. But yeah, it is. It, it and she's been a real rock, and yeah. uh, you know, to have an understanding wife like that and a supporter as well. So she understands it as well. She understands the mechanics of it all, and and uh, and she follows football. So. It's an easy, it was yeah. an easy uh, transition for me. What do you make of it now then? Uh, you do see Wednesday quite regularly. Yeah, I do, yeah. BBC Radio Sheffield. Um, perhaps we can agree on a couple of things. A, it's not a crisis. They're only two points off the playoffs, yeah. despite these back-to-back -back defeats that have set them back. And secondly, a couple of weeks ago, Carlos Carvalhiel could do very little wrong mm. in the eyes of supporters. So let's put it into con that <laughs> context first of all. It is. Uh, it I mean, the last season in particular, I think, um, you know, he deserves m huge credit. Mm. He's, you know, he's put a team together last year in particular and had a fantastic end of the season. The only downside was the end part. Mm. And uh, that was disappointing. Absolutely. Uh -huh. What a big opportunity, perhaps not realising what a massive opportunity, using the word advisedly, yeah. it really was. It was. Um, missed. You know, it was a missed opportunity. And, and, yeah. I, and I think the players underperformed on that day. Mm. I think, I don't know whether it was the occasion or whatever, but it, it, it was a, a pretty disappointing end. However, the, the chairman is very, very strong. He wants success. You can see that. Mm. Um, and with the success that they had last year, he's only added more pressure on the manager because you've done it once, we expect yeah. you to do it again. Yeah. But this time I'm going to give you some ammunition. He's given more players. Yeah. And now the, the players that he's brought in, uh, the likes of Reach and Fletcher, and, you, you know, have added more pressure. Mm. And, to the manager. And to the manager. And he's trying to find what his best 11 is. Yeah. It, and I think you're seeing more changes this year in the team, mm. week in, week out, than you did see last year. In fact, I could have named the team last year. Yeah. This time, I'm not so sure I could name that first 11. And it's still most of that first 11 who's produced the better results when they've had them. Yeah, and it looks like he's trying to... I don't know whether he's reverting back to it, Yeah. but that, that was his success. And, yeah. and unfortunately, the, these players that have come in, you're having to dismantle it a little bit. And if it doesn't mm. quite gel, I think that, that has made it more difficult because it hasn't gelled as well as it did last year. Is it because he's trying to keep everybody happy when he's got more players, or is it because he, he genuinely doesn't know his best 11, or is it simply horses for courses? Which, which one of the yeah, three I mean, is it? Well, I, I think, you know, he's, he's, he's very much his own man, I can see that. Mm. And, um, you know, he makes the changes, and he makes some strong changes when required. Uh, he's made some positive changes. Um, the fact that he's got too much options does 
does come into it. Mm. Um, and I didn't particularly like big squads um, no. because they do come with a problem. And the problem is everybody wants to play. So you're always going to be unpopular, which is what the job is in any way. It's down to you to pick the team, the best team, week in, week out. And you want the team to be continually being successful, but consistent. Mm. Last year they had consistency, mm. and this year they're inconsistent, which is a little bit of a surprise because the big players that were coming through last year have not quite delivered. No. Bannon's gone off a boil yeah. a little bit. Forest Forest Jerry's Jerry's has gone off the boil. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting, I listened to the radio coming in uh, tonight. Um, Forestieri's had 10 clubs in 10 years. Right. Never really stayed. No. Now, whether it's, I don't know what it is, but he seems mm. to have lost that drive that he had last year. Yeah. He's, he's, and he's an excellent player. Absolutely. I think he's one of the best in the division. Looks a lost soul at the moment. The most surprising thing with the level of ability, including him, and you've got proven goal scorer like Gary Hooper at Fletcher's, a, an excellent striker, is just the lack of goals, averaging just, just a fraction over one per game. And there's a fortnight now, or we're half, almost halfway through a fortnight. Do you think that Carlos will have gone away and had a major rethink, perhaps, about the way he's going to play the game? Because it, it seems to be all link play and passing and nobody in the box and no end product to me at the moment. Well, just the, at the moment. Yeah, uh, the one thing that was very apparent last year, and I watched the, a lot of the, the and studied the, how they were playing, and the one thing that there seemed to be um, a very consistent level of uh, delivery of balls in the box mm. from either side, and that was very apparent last year, so therefore they created more chances yeah. by doing that. Um, this year, they're, they're not crossing the ball as much as I've no. seen last year. It's more inside rather than the outside. Yes. Now, it, it could be down to two factors. First of all, the opposition who you're yeah. playing against. They're and, wised, wised and, up, aren't and, they? And, yeah, the, the yeah. may have sussed yeah. Wednesday out and said, well, we start force them inside, they're not going to be as dangerous. And yeah. sometimes that could be, and that's where you've got yeah. to try and overcome that as well because when the teams, the, the opposition start sussing you out, um, it's, it's hard to stop. But with the full-backs that they've got and the pace in that area, and with players like Wallace, who's been out of favour, and not, one of several players not performing to a level, and you've got reach, you do actually have the players there to go wide and yeah. get it over. I mean, uh, I, think? I, yeah, I do. I, I think the one thing that they used to do is, as soon as they get in that area, their strikers knew that the ball was going to come in. Mm. And, it, and if they get to a certain point, the balls were coming in. You could see that even in the warm-up, they were practicing crossing, making sure that the the deliveries are good. But also the players were making near post runs, far runs, and um, you know, so they had a real drive about them. But as I said, I don't see that as much yeah. in these last few games in particular. I think what they, I think they've been very um, hard working. I think the football they've played has been very good at a high standard. But in the last third, they've not been as clinical. It's yeah. almost Chess football, yes, where they're trying to actually walk the ball in the back yeah. of that. It's the Arsenal syndrome, isn't yeah. it? Really, and the, but there's no doubt. I don't know whether you agree that they have the players and the manager for oh, the absolutely. job. Yeah, I, I, those two things are not. They've not changed. Doubt for me. No, yeah. they haven't changed. And um, Cavalier, he's got a good backroom staff with him, and and the, he's got the he's certainly got the tools to work with. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's that's uh, that's a, that's something that. A lot of the managers in, in, for Sheffield Wednesday in particular have not had over the last decade. You did, though, didn't you? Well, I had the tools. <laughs> yeah. I had the lowest budget, I think. Uh, I had the lowest budget in the league, just about. But, uh, yeah, it is very, very difficult to handle for him. But uh, I have to say, I, I still think they'll be in the race, though. Yeah, OK. Well, I, I, only top six was expected, you know, and they're still just two points outside the top six. Uh, a second half is to come in five minutes. Christmas is coming and people need a bit of fuel for the fire. Yeah, I always say that uh, the, the, the perfect <laughs> book for the, for the fire, if you have read it, and yeah. certainly it's got two uses, it's, it's not a bad read, but if you really do desperately need to warm the fire up, this will last. Oh, it'll burn long into the night. Into the night. Uh, Brian and I, a great pleasure writing that book. We'll, we'll remind you of it in the second half. Also, the double heart bypass operation, the circumstances and the warning. Rejoin us in five. Brilliant. Okay. Great half.
to say that it's a very, very good standard indeed. No, it is. You have to be careful, don't you? Because people do mistake what fellas say about women's football. They really do get yeah. the wrong ideas sometimes. Absolutely. And they, and they, they take it as a sarcasm rather than anything else. But yeah. it isn't. It actually is. It's quite true that, they, you know, I've been very impressed. And, I mean, even uh, uh, I'd seen recently uh, uh, a few games on television and uh, in, it hasn't put me off, you know, thinking, no. oh, it's just because it's, it's women playing. I actually quite enjoy, enjoy watching it. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. And I look forward to hearing more uh, about uh, Sheffield Ladies' achievement from, from Carl Award. James Gregg, who would normally be here to round up everything else, uh, he's uh, otherwise gainfully employed. He's found a better gig. <laughs> He'll be back next week. Is it me? I must, uh, do I smell? Uh, well, it's not only that. <laughs> it, 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 I rick my back, tore a back muscle this week, and I'm sponsored on the show this week. I'm sponsored by my daughter, actually, without whom I wouldn't be sitting here with socks and shoes on because I can't bend down to put socks and shoes on. And, it, by the way, Isabel, you, you, you're going to have to take them off tonight as well <laughs> when I get back home. <laughs> and Brian, now this is a bit more seriously, uh, has a health warning for us because he's a, he's a fit and healthy chap. I've known him for, for many years. He, he looks... In Very warm welcome to the programme as ever on a Thursday night sporting chat for the best part of an hour. Normally the sporting chat involves two or three people. We're going to overburden one person tonight because there were supposed to be four of us. I've only got the one guest here this evening but if you've ever listened to him, seen him on television, you'll know that he can fill good portions of time and he does regularly on Saturdays even now. Even though he's a former manager at this point in time, a former top player as well, uh, and somebody that I've uh, enjoyed writing a book with, among other things, Brian Laws. It's good to see you again, and Brian. You. Uh, and you. Thank you. And a good job. You turned up. That's <laughs> all I can say. Because I like we, to fill the seat. I, yeah, I, yeah, I can yeah. fill it. I can fill Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Spreading out. Spreading I am out. spreading out. Uh, a lot of my guests are spreading out at this uh, time of their lives. And dare I say, so is the presenter. Um, First of all, apologies to uh, supporters, and there are many, and they deserve many more, of uh, Sheffield Ladies Football Club. Uh, we were due to have uh, Carla Ward, the captain, with us uh, in the studio. Very sadly, she's, uh, she's gone down ill today. Nothing too serious, I hope, but best wishes for a, a quick recovery, Carla, and I'll be in touch to rearrange your visit to the studio. And we'll hear about their season, because they done remarkably well. First season in the uh, FA Women's Super League and in Super League 2 finished fifth in the table. Which is remarkable, isn't it? It, it is. shows you how powerful women's football has now come on. It it's amazing. Does. You know, I've been following it over the last few years and, and seeing the, the increasing um, spectators that have been following ladies football and it's yeah. now they're getting on te television areas now within Sky and, and it's, yeah. it's become very, very popular. And, uh, and, you know, and some of them are fantastic players. It's brilliant to watch. Yeah, it is. I went to see a game quite recently involving Sheffield. Fantastic standard. Really, yeah. really good. And, um, there, I mean, we used to be accused of being patronising about it. There's no patronising. And they come clear. There was mm. nothing on that. I had a scan. There was nothing on that. Bloods and everything. So I, I felt pretty good. Mm. But he still wasn't convinced, which it was bizarre, I think, to say. Mm. He said, I'm still not convinced. I, I think there's something more. What we, can, we need to you know, discuss, and he uh, yeah. he ended up saying, really, to cut a long story short, you know, you, you have to have an angiogram, really, to find out the, the true aspect of it all. OK, well, that sets the scene. We'll come back to Brian sure. a little bit later in the programme, because there is something very serious underlying this. I mean, I saw Brian late last season, because you cover games for yeah. Radio Sheffield and yeah. at Nottingham, for Nottingham Forest for the radio station there. And I'd seen you then, and I saw you early season at Hillsborough looking in prime form. Uh, and I was absolutely stunned to hear that in between you'd had this, this yeah. heart surgery. And we can talk later about what that, how much football management may have affected you in terms of, of, of that. Yeah. But also, perhaps a warning to everybody out there. Uh, 
about the signs to, to look for. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's great to see you and look, looking so well. We'll talk a bit, a bit about Sheffield Wednesday. Sure. Uh, go, going through a bit of a, a rough patch at the, at the moment, slightly sticky patch, in absolute prime condition. You would never have known that you recently had a, a, a very major operation. Yeah. Um, so it's the first time I've actually talked about it. Um, I've kept it quite quiet, but in, in June this year, uh, unknown to me, I wasn't expecting it, uh, ended up with a, a double heart bypass, which um, from, a, from my point of view, from a sporting point of view, it's just total shock. Wasn't yeah. expecting anything and, and took me by surprise. And uh, it, we only really found out by, by fluke rather than anything else, uh, which, you know, probably because of my fitness over the years, is disguised probably the, the true depth of it all. But um, thankfully, a friend of mine who's a, who, who is a doctor, um, and when I talked to him about what I thought was having, um, you know, heartburn, um, the only thing that I talked about heartburn with my doctor was because I've never suffered with heartburn before. No. So that was my only sort of sign. It only lasted a few minutes, and yet, um, he felt that there was something more sinister than that and wanted to do all these tests and I ended up with doing uh, ECGs and um, 